No one was prepared when the price appeared on the screen. 9999 for a brand new Tesla. It wasn't a joke, nor a crazy weekend sale. It was real. A futuristic electric car, packed with all the technology from one of the world's largest companies, offered for less than many used sedans. The reaction was immediate. Forums exploded, WhatsApp groups buzzed, and even those who'd never dreamed of owning an EV started doing the math. After all, since when did buying a Tesla become cheaper than a 2010 Honda Civic? It was as if someone had hit the reset button on the automotive industry. The announcement struck like a bolt from the blue in the market. For years, analysts and competitors believed that the biggest obstacle to electric cars would always be price. And they weren't wrong. Most automakers kept EVs on the high shelf, selling innovation only to those who could afford it. Tesla, in fact, was also navigating this path with its luxury models and bold designs. But now, everything has changed. This new model, dubbed the Model 2, wasn't here to compete with the Porsche Taycan. It was here to invade the middle-class garage. But what do you mean by 99999? It sounds like a joke. It's not. The price is only valid for 15,000 first buyers in the United States, who reserve through the Tesla app with a $99 deposit by January 2026. Those who secure this privileged spot will pick up their car directly at Giga Texas, starting in March of the same year. A limited launch, yes, but with explosive potential. The message was clear. Either automakers adapt to this new reality, or they will be swallowed up by it. The Model 2 has become the benchmark for the new era of electric vehicles. This isn't just a question of list price. It's a direct provocation. Tesla is essentially saying that it is possible to manufacture and sell an affordable electric car. And it's putting its reputation and industrial structure on the line to prove it. The message is clear. If you're still charging $30,000 or $40,000 for a basic EV, you're going against the grain of the revolution. And in this game, those who hesitate lose market share. The impact of this decision began to spread like wildfire. With every click of the reserve button, a traditional automaker felt the ground shake. The Model 2, in fact, didn't even need to reveal all its details to generate a frenzy. The mere fact that it existed and cost less than $10,000 was enough to make headlines worldwide. YouTube was filled with videos trying to understand how this was possible. Experts analyzed every word Elon Musk said, searching for clues behind the scenes. The launch became a kind of collective mystery, with everyone trying to decipher the trick, where the profit lies, or if there's a catch hidden between the lines. But there's no trick at least not in the traditional sense. What exists is an aggressive strategy designed for volume, not margin. A bet that transforms the car into a gateway to an entire ecosystem. Because even if the direct profit from the vehicle sale is limited or almost non-existent, the real game is in the add-ons, the services, the updates, the software packages. Tesla is selling more than a car. It's selling a subscription on wheels. Another point few have noticed. This launch is also a response to criticism. For years, Tesla was accused of being elitist, of creating an unreachable bubble. Now, with the Model 2, the brand has turned the tables. It's saying, okay, you wanted a Tesla for everyone? Here it is. And it's not a stripped down, reduced, or shameful version. It's a product with its own identity designed to be affordable from the outset, without losing its technological DNA. This changes everything, because it forces the entire market to rethink its projects, its supply chains, its long-term plans. The first reaction of anyone who sees the price tag is to think, impossible. How can an electric car cost less than many popular combustion engine models? The answer begins with the cold math of production. Tesla broke down the numbers and revealed a cost structure so refined, it seems like the work of an efficiency-obsessed engineer. The battery alone, typically the most expensive component of an EV, 
costs around $3,500. The engine and drivetrain, another $1,500. Electronics and software, $1,000. And the rest is divided between assembly, logistics, and a profit margin that barely reaches four digits. A delicate balance, but possible when you master each step of the process. This cost engineering didn't come out of nowhere. Tesla invested years in automation, design refinement, and component standardization. Every detail was designed to be inexpensive from the very first draft. It's not about cutting quality, but about reducing excess. Optimized production lines, modular parts, upgradable software, and an increasingly verticalized supply chain have enabled this level of control. The secret lies not in a single trick, but in the sum of small strategic decisions made with an obsession for efficiency. Another factor that helps balance this crazy calculation is local incentives. In places like New York, the car can be even cheaper thanks to incentive programs like the Drive Clean Rebate, which offers up to $2,000 for vehicles with good range. And since the Model 2 delivers between 200 and 250 miles per charge, it easily fits into that range. Now think, a Tesla priced at $9,999 could drop to $7,999 just because it exists in the right state. It's as if the system is, for the first time, working in the consumer's favor. And the savings don't stop at the point of purchase. EV owners in New York also benefit from special rates for charging during off-peak hours. This alone can represent annual savings of around $400. Add to this benefits like monthly credits for off-peak charging and toll exemptions on expressways and the cost of maintaining a Model 2 becomes a joke compared to the cost of a combustion-powered car. It's not just cheap to buy, it's cheap to maintain. And this completely changes the consumer's budget. In Los Angeles, the story takes a different turn. There, the Clean Cars 4. All program can offer up to $12,000 to anyone who trades in an old gasoline-powered car for a new EV. For some low-income families, this can drop the final price to less than $5,000. It's like trading in a broken down car for a brand new Tesla with air conditioning, 250 miles of range, and automatic updates. An exchange of status, technology, and savings in a single move. And with partial tax exemptions, dealer bonuses, and even a discount on home charger installation. Tesla, of course, benefits from this incentive network but it also did its part. It optimized everything to fit the Model 2 precisely within the criteria of these programs. It's almost as if the car was tailored to take full advantage of the system's loopholes. While other manufacturers try to adapt their models to state requirements, Tesla arrives with the game already won. Every detail was calculated to translate into an economic advantage for the customer and a competitive advantage for the company. To complete the picture, there's also the scale factor. The production cost of each unit drops dramatically when millions are produced. And that's the plan. The Model 2 wasn't meant to be a niche car, but a mass product. Tesla wants to produce in droves, sell in droves, and dominate through volume. And with Giga Texas's infrastructure and expanding logistics partnerships, this scale is already being put into practice. The $9,990 price tag is just the beginning. If all goes as planned, it could drop even further over time. In major American cities, the Model 2's impact has already begun to unfold behind the scenes. In Los Angeles, for example, where traffic jams are a part of everyday life, the launch of Tesla's most affordable car has found fertile ground. Low-income families who previously viewed electric vehicles as something distant have begun to seriously consider exchanging their old cars for a new, more fuel-efficient and technologically advanced model. State and municipal programs, combined with incentives from local dealerships, have created an almost surreal scenario, purchasing a Tesla for less than the cost of a high-end cell phone. The Clean Cars for All program is one such incentive 
that has become a key part of this equation. By offering up to $12,000 to those who dispose of old, polluting vehicles, the Californian government has practically placed the Model 2 in the lap of the right consumer. If we add this to the partial tax exemption and the possibility of additional dealer bonuses, the real cost for some families could plummet to the $3,000 to $5,000 range. This is unprecedented in the history of electric vehicles in the West, especially considering that this amount covers a car with respectable range, connectivity, and an onboard intelligent system. And it's not just at the time of purchase that consumers benefit. Maintenance costs, refueling via recharge, and indirect benefits like access to dedicated lanes and toll discounts make the Model 2 a logical option, even for those who've never considered an electric car. Furthermore, dealerships like LADWP and Pacific Gas and Electric even offer bonuses for installing home chargers, which reduces adaptation costs and eases the transition to this new mobility. Ultimately, the car pays for itself in savings in time, money, and peace of mind. Meanwhile, in New York, the situation is different, but no less favorable. The city, famous for its strict environmental policies, already offers up to a $2,000 direct discount on the purchase of electric vehicles with a range exceeding 200 miles. And since the Model 2 falls precisely within this range, the bonus is almost guaranteed. Combined with lower electricity rates during off-peak hours and monthly credits offered by companies like Con Edison, Tesla owners can save up to $580 per year just by charging their car. The environmental bonus also extends to urban mobility. EV owners in New York City earn Clean Pass stickers, which grant access to the express lanes of the Long Island Expressway a valuable perk for those who face heavy daily traffic. This makes the Model 2 not only an economical alternative, but also a tool for urban survival. The time saved on commutes, combined with the financial savings, make the car an almost unbeatable proposition within major cities. In Las Vegas, where state incentives are more limited, the game is different. Nevada doesn't offer direct subsidies for EV purchases. But programs like NV Energies, which covers up to $500 for the installation of Level 2 chargers, ease the burden on homeowners when preparing for the car. Local taxes also weigh heavily, about 820 filers in taxes on the full price of the Model 2. But rumor has it that Tesla itself is willing to cover part of this cost for promotional units as a way to maintain the aggressive appeal of the initial campaign, even with less government support. Vegas consumers can still benefit from other strategies. Tesla's network of superchargers, strategically spread throughout the city and surrounding highways, ensures fast and constant refueling. Furthermore, the brand's growing presence in the state indicates that more local partnerships are likely to emerge soon. It's a domino effect. The car arrives cheaply, generates interest, and surrounding solutions begin to organize themselves to keep up with demand. Vegas may not be the most incentivized market, but it is fertile ground for this new type of mobility. Behind the aggressive pricing lies a meticulously designed strategy that reveals much more than a simple marketing ploy. Tesla is foregoing immediate profits to build a massive user base and consolidate its dominance in volume, not just prestige. The decision to absorb approximately $850 in taxes for each of the 15,000 Model 2 promotional units isn't generosity, it's calculation. The total cost of this action exceeds $12 million, but the return comes in other currencies. Market presence, loyalty, and recurring revenue from software and upgrades. The company knows where the gold is. By 2024, Tesla had grossed over $2 billion from over-the-air updates and additional paid features alone. In this business model, the car is merely the gateway. It's like offering a smartphone for free and charging for apps. The Model 2, even a basic one, already comes with the foundation for upgrades like full self-driving for $8,000,
premium paint for $1,500, connectivity subscriptions, and much more. The experience starts out cheap, but transforms into an ecosystem of continuous consumption. This concept isn't new in technology, but it's revolutionary in the automotive industry. Tesla wants consumers to think of the car as a constantly evolving service, not a static product. Therefore, the low initial price is a powerful lure. It attracts those who couldn't afford a Tesla before and, over time, converts these customers into subscribers, software testers, and consumers of extras. And all this without needing to convince them again, the vehicle will already be in the garage, connected to the cloud, and ready for the next new development. And it doesn't stop there. The Model 2 is also a key component of Tesla's global expansion. The goal is bold to sell 5 million units by 2028, with 60% of sales going to Asia and Africa. Markets where access to electric vehicles is still limited, but where demand for clean, affordable mobility is growing. The company is positioning the Model 2 as a universal product, simple, affordable, and scalable, a model that can be replicated in emerging markets with slight adaptations without losing its essence. In countries with lower purchasing power, the low-cost, high-connectivity model has immediate appeal. And with the experience accumulated in gigafactories in the United States, Germany, and China, Tesla already has the infrastructure to meet this demand. The goal is clear, to colonize the planet with affordable electric cars, while other automakers are still stuck in the logic of premium EVs. The Model 2 is the tool for this mission small, affordable, but powerful in impact. This new business model also weakens Tesla's dependence on government incentives by slashing production costs to the extreme and turning profit into a long-term strategy. It can operate even in countries with little or no incentive policies for electric vehicles. This is crucial for entering regions where subsidies are still non-existent. Affordability now comes from the factory, not the government. This independence gives Tesla an unquestionable geopolitical advantage. Another consequence of this strategy is the weakening of traditional automakers that still resist the digital revenue model. Companies that insist on selling only physical cars and profiting exclusively from them are falling behind. While they struggle to balance costs with tight margins, Tesla plays in a different league, one where the car is just the beginning and this forces the entire industry to rethink not only the product, but also the concept of customer relationships. If there's one thing that's always sparked debate when it comes to autonomous cars, it's Tesla's insistence on using only cameras in its automated driving system. While many rivals are betting on LiDAR sensors, radars, and a whole host of other detection tools, Elon Musk has always championed the idea that if humans drive with their eyes, cars could do the same with cameras and artificial intelligence. The result is the FSD 12.5 system, now on board the Model 2, which is capable of interpreting the world around it with an accuracy that astonishes even the most skeptical. The database? No less than 15 billion real-world miles driven by Tesla cars in everyday situations, from storms to dark tunnels. This massive archive feeds neural networks that function almost like an evolving brain. The Model 2's cameras process up to 40,000 frames per second, allowing the car to see and react faster than many human drivers. And unlike systems that rely on expensive, weather-vulnerable sensors, the computer vision-based FSD continues to function even in heavy rain, dense fog, or low light. Internal testing showed that in 85% of adverse scenarios, Tesla's system outperformed LiDAR-based solutions. 